Lift, the fundamental building block of flight, a force that allows aircraft like the massive but beautiful Airbus A380 to fly as if they were weightless. As we delve into Lift, we have to ask ourselves, what is it? To put it simply, Lift is the force that directly opposes the weight of an airplane in the air. Most of this lift is generated by the wings, however every part of an aircraft generates some amount of lift. According to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's Aviation Department, the top of a wing is rounded, while the bottom is relatively flat. Because of this, wind traveling over the wing will have an increased speed, and as a result, will have a lower pressure than the air below the wing. This imbalance in pressure is called the pressure gradient. Wings are designed to create this kind of pressure gradient because air always moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Since the wing is stuck between these two areas of unequal pressure, it is lifted towards the area of low pressure by the force of the high pressure air trying to get to the low pressure side. Aircraft come in various shapes and sizes. However, when it comes to commercial airliners, most use either tapered or swept back wings. Tapered wings, while commonplace among planes from World War II, are not as popular today among commercial aircraft such as the Emirates Airbus A380 and Turkish Airlines Boeing 777 seen in this video, which instead have swept back wings. The benefits are plentiful. Swept and tapered wings generate a lot of lift, even at slower speeds. And while flying slower, there is greater stability. Be that as it may, they do have their disadvantages. They are limited in how fast they can travel and can create unwanted drag. But that's what people wanted to do, go faster. As a result, new types of wings were developed for passenger use, being the Delta Wing. Two pretty much identical supersonic aircraft the elegant Aeropostale Concorde shown here and the Soviet Toplev Tu-144 use this type of wing, specifically an Ogival Delta Wing. Ogival wings are still Delta Wings, but they have a bottleneck look to them, along with no elevators at the tail. Delta Wings have their own sets of advantages and disadvantages. Delta wings are perfect for generating a lot of lift at very fast speeds. Planes with delta wings also are relatively unaffected by turbulence, giving them a very smooth ride. Furthermore, because of their stability, they are able to fly at cruising altitudes of 60,000 feet at a speed of Mach 2.02 .02, or 1,334 miles per hour, compared to a Boeing 737 which cruises at about 37,000 feet. They were also super aerodynamic and with current jet engine technology have the capability to be very fuel efficient. Concorde's engines were designed to be fast, not energy efficient. However, Delta wings have some drawbacks. They need lots of high pressure airflow pushing on the wing to keep it aloft. This means that takeoff and landing speeds are incredibly fast at 250 miles per hour and 185 miles per hour respectively, compared to the takeoff and landing speed of a Boeing 777 being 150 miles per hour and 160 miles per hour respectively. Such fast takeoffs and landings are extremely tricky to maneuver and require great skill. When looking at a picture of Concorde flying, it's typical to see the nose angled up quite high in relativity to the horizon. This angle is known as the angle of attack, which is the angle the wings must angle in relativity to the horizon in order to maintain adequate lift. Delta wings require a very high angle of attack, up to 13 degrees, 15 if traveling very slow, while conventional aircraft need anywhere from 3 to 5 degrees for the same effect. With renewed, however, with renewed interest in supersonic technology from companies like the Denver-based Boom Supersonic, we might see these beautiful birds fly in the air again someday. We can hope for the future. <laughs>